thank you very much for making time to share your insights into the future of leadership. But before we walk into the future, can you tell us a little bit about your own background? Where did you grow up? Uh, sure, hi. Um, I grew up in Johannesburg. I'm a Josie girl. And I lived here until I was 19. And then I moved to Mozambique. And then I spent some time in Botswana before returning home. And tell us, Sally, what was your dream career when you grew up? I wanted, I wanted to run safari camps. That was all that I wanted to do. <laughs> yeah. um, and live in the bush. And uh, yeah, that was, that was really what I, what I dreamed of doing. And that's what I studied. So, and I did get to live in the bush for quite a long time. So that was great. Right. And who inspired you in your early days? So I was really lucky. I think uh, I had I had so many great people that I um, that I worked alongside. But I think the one person that really stood out for me, uh, her name was Jill, and she used to run um, Barra Lodge in Mozambique. And I would say that she was my mentor. She she was really a person that instilled in me the idea that uh, that you could be anything that you wanted to be, and around the power of having a great work ethic. Uh, and, uh, you know, about being a woman, you know, a woman in a position of leadership. She was really the, the person I think that, that believed in me and spent a lot of time mentoring me in that direction. And Sally, today you're a global leader in employee experience for the likes of PepsiCo, Walmart, MassMart. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what attracted you to this field and why is employee experience so important today? So I think that for me, employ where I where I moved to was really, you know, I'd, I'd come from a sort of CRM and marketing background, and uh, when I moved back to Joburg, and I was really interested in how that same sort of thinking could be, you know, could be translated into internal customers. And the more I got involved in it, the more I started to to think about my own experiences and the people that I'd worked with and how the experience of working alongside those people had really changed my life and allowed me to dream more, be more, work harder, learn lots of different skill sets. And I realized that if that could be, um, if that could be the, done for me, then that could be done for everybody. And I started to have a look at some of the bigger organizations and started to work alongside them to seeing how we could get everybody uh, speaking and having conversations with their, with their companies, because after all, that's where it starts. So that's really, I think, um, how I got involved in it. And yeah, employee experience is... I think has really come to the fore in the last year or so with, with COVID and everybody working from home. Uh, I think that before the sort of HR human capital space was seen very much as a supporting role rather than an actual um, strategic leadership pillar. And I think that that's really changed where they started to see that ultimately your workforce is what makes or breaks your customer experience It what makes or breaks your profitability, your ability to, to pivot or to change under um, difficult circumstances. So yeah, I think employee experience is really the, the next frontier. And tell us, looking back over your career, Sadie, was there a turning point where things could have gone different? Um, yeah, I think when I moved back to when I moved back to Joburg, I got involved in um, actually in software sales, strangely enough. And, um, you know, I, I was working uh, in a family business at that time. And um, that definitely <laughs> that definitely wasn't for me. That didn't work out so well for me. So I suppose if that had gone a little differently, I might have ended up in the software sales side. But as it turns out, um, it didn't. And yeah, that's really what set me on down this path to where I am now. And on a personal level, Sally, you're also a powerlifting champion. You just won, you came, you won silver at the South African Master Powerlifting Tournament. You represented South Africa in Barcelona at the World's Championship. So what is it that attracted you to powerlifting? And how does powerlifting complement your, your journey? 
Um, so yeah, I do both power and Olympic lifting and um, I love them both. I think for somebody that has an A type personality like I do, um, you can never lift all of the weight. There's always something more. There's always one kilogram more. There's always an inc incremental gain to make. So um, I think I like, uh, I really like that challenge. And I think that a, a large part about um, both disciplines is that there's a huge um, there's a huge work ethic that has to go into it. Uh, it's something that um, you have to do every single day and you have to really work at. So I, I like that it complements it for me and it yeah, it gives me a goal and something to reach for. And um, I think on the on the female empowerment side, I love the idea that girls are lifting weights. Um, I love what it what it does for my daughter. Um, the example that it sets for her uh, that she should think of her mom hopefully as a a strong woman in all senses, and that that fitness and um, health becomes something that's aspirational for her. And Sebi, can you tell us what is driving you today? So I'm a, I'm a mad, passionate South African. Um, I, I love my country and I am really, really, really uh, driven to get everybody um, in this country, you know, hopefully uh, employed and enjoying their job, getting, um, getting them access to skills, getting them access to self-development, getting them access to... Uh, to the I can moments and learning moments that are going to to help not only individuals but entire communities change um, change the course of of their lives. I think that uh, as corporates in South Africa, we have so many opportunities to uplift communities uh, through learning and empowerment. And for me, if we can get everyone connected to their employee, uh, sorry, their employer and we can get them learning and benefiting from those connections, they in turn can influence their own communities, they can provide um, education to, to those, those communities, and we can help to move this country forward. So is it fair to say, Sally, you're not only a power lifter, you're also an uplifter? I'm working towards that every day. That's, that's, a, that's another goal. So Sally, looking into the future, and I know it's a big question, but what does the future of leadership mean to you? To me, the future of leadership um, comes down to, to the human nature of work, to building um, empathy, to, I think, um, I think bringing in elements of trust and vulnerability back into to leadership. Uh, and to, I think, to really understand that ultimately we are all people um, and we all are completely different and we need to look at where we can, um, we, where we can as leaders meet people where they are. So understand where they are um, and really see how we can meet them there, how we can uh, upskill and uplift um, and how we can how we can look around a room and see that there are a whole lot of people with a whole lot of different skills that are um, bringing in their expertise to make our companies better. And that being a leader doesn't necessarily mean that you are the smartest person in the room. In fact, it just means that you're really good at choosing people that are experts in their own field and you're good at blending those skills together. Rather like um, making a really great cake. You need a little bit of everything to make a great cake, um, you know. So if you can position yourself as the as the baker or the chef rather than the top ingredient, if that makes sense. It certainly does. And Sally, what have you learned from your own journey that you would consider most important for building future leaders? I think um, being honest and vulnerable with your with your employees, um, you know, and with with your clients and suppliers, you know, telling them when things are going right, when things are going wrong, um, what you're going to do about it. I think that that open and honesty really brings trust. Uh, I think that that gives you a, um, I guess that puts credit in the bank <laughs> for when you need it. 
Uh, I think as well, just being honest about the fact that you don't always know everything, you don't have the answers, but that you're, you're going to try and find out and you're going to try and come back with answers or better that you can co-create um, solutions with the people that you're partnering with, whether that's a client, a supplier or an employee that's, uh, that you co-create something together because once you, once you get everybody's buy-in and it's something that everyone's made together, I think that you find that it's, it's a lot better for everyone involved. Absolutely. And tell us, Sally, when you speak to aspiring leaders and maybe your team members and even your children, what is it you tell them about social media? How should they navigate social media to build their own leadership brand? Um, I think for me, social media is the one thing that I'm incredibly grateful that didn't exist when I was a teenager. <laughs> um, and that there's, uh, there's not necessarily photographic evidence floating around. So I think what I do pass on, especially to, um, to my children and to, to younger people, uh, younger people that I work with is is to be to be wise with it to be cautious um, there is a digital footprint now that is is built um, about you and you need to be cognizant of that you know to build a personal brand is something that takes some time uh, but can be destroyed in an instant so you need to think about um, you know what you want to do and how you want to how you want to use it because ultimately social media are tools um, and they can be incredibly effective. They can be a great platform for sharing ideas and for um, adding real value to other people's lives and connecting like-minded people. But uh, yeah, you do need to, I think, just be very intentional. I guess that's the right word for me about what you want to do with your personal brand. And Sally, what is your advice for future leaders when it comes to challenges? What are some of the biggest challenges they should expect to encounter in their career? Um, I think that one of the biggest challenges uh, comes down to, um, I think, to self-care. I think that you need to be very cognizant of burning the candle at both ends. And I think that you need to, as everybody says, you can't pour from an empty, from an empty flask. Um, I think that's very true. And I think that people have glamorized uh, working ridiculous hours um, rather than looking at the quality that they're adding. So I do think that self-care is something that, that people need to, future leaders need to take, uh, you know, need to take stock of quite early on and set up some, some good boundaries. Um, I think as well that you especially for um, for female leaders, there's a lot of pressure around women um, being seen to, to do it all. And I think that you need to be, be mindful and, you know, understand that at some, that your, you know, your, your priorities are going to shift and change. And that's, that's for everybody. Your priorities are going to shift and change. Um, and that's okay. You just need to understand that your path might not be A, B, C, D, E. It might be A, E, C, D. It's not necessarily a linear path. Um, I also think you need to understand that a lot of the jobs of the future don't exist yet. So being open to learning and uh, being open to the fact that things are going to change fundamentally all the time, uh, I think that that's something that will set you up well uh, as a future leader. And Sally, if you were to design a curriculum for future leaders, what are some of the new skills you would want to factor in? So I think that uh, I think that my approach would be very much uh, mastery of self. Um, I think it would be very focused on your on your mindset um, and working a lot on self development. So I think uh, cultivating a growth mindset, um, being open to to teach yourself to be a um, forever a student, continuously learning. Uh, I think as well to, to have a good grounding and understanding of technology. I see that a lot where uh, people are not necessarily, they say, oh, I, I don't really understand how hosting works. So I don't really understand how the internet works. Or I think that everybody needs to have quite a solid grounding and understanding of how tech works. Um, I think that will assist you hugely um, in finding the best solution for the various challenges that you'll have regardless of your career choice. 
Um, and then I think becoming a, a great listener. Uh, I think that's a very underrated skill. I think to, to teach yourself to be a great listener and build in your mind if you can, um, or build it in your newly acquired tech skill, um, build yourself an internal CRM. Try and remember everybody's, you know, everybody's name, something about them, listen to them, really understand who they are and what they're interested in. And I think that that skill um, cannot be underrated. I love that. Internal CRM. Now, Sally, as a mentor to future leaders, can you maybe share a success story or two where you mentored an upcoming leader and that person took your advice to heart? I think um, I think where I think I'd like to, to say that I've had quite a few um, people that I've mentored that have come through through talk as a company and have gone on to to great successes. But I think the one thing I'd like to just talk about is I actually just did an exit interview with um, one of the one of my uh, my my mentees, and she is be she's moving on to F and B. And the one thing that she said to me, which I, I, I've taken as a great compliment and, and a success, is she said to me, when she started, she felt like she'd lost her voice and that she didn't know who she was and that she was just doing a job. And, uh, you know, from working through and with us, and I think uh, really focusing on um, all of the things that I've mentioned around the skill set, by the time that she left, she felt that she'd found her voice again, that she knew who she was and that she was confident in the value that she was bringing to another company. And I think for me, that's the greatest compliment I've ever received is that people that come through the ranks at talk and that I have an impact, if I can help them find their voice and help them have a great sense of self and the fact that they have value to add um, wherever they choose to go, for me, that is the biggest success that you could possibly have as a leader. And Sally, in your leadership journey and maybe in your learning journey, who are the role models of leadership that you would recommend future leaders should learn from? Oh, this is a long list. Um, <laughs> let's start with, uh, I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of uh, Nene Molefe. Uh, I think her work on diversity and inclusion is incredible. And if you haven't read her book, you, you have to. Um, I think she's really, really amazing. And she has led so many um, fantastic companies. And she, yeah, she's yeah, she's an incredible human. Um, I'm also very fond of uh, of Natasha from, um, she actually works in the government. She does a lot of work with female empowerment uh, and gender, gender equality. Um, Brene Brown, I know, is an author as well that I, I, I'm sure a lot of people mention, but for me, she's incredible. Her work on vulnerability and being open, I think Daring Greatly is one of the greatest books I've ever read. Um, from a personal note, uh, I'm uh, LZ van Ikak from Boulder's Warehouse is a phenomenal leader as well. She's really, um, I think she's someone that everyone can learn from about uh, the power of empathy and the bringing, bringing people into their own. She's a phenomenal leader in that regard. And then um, Donald Kamalu from the from the JSE. Uh, he's he's a fantastic person. He's done so much around uh, equal equal rights for uh, for all for all genders around um, paternity, maternity, parental leave. Uh, he's really been quite a trendsetter, and I think uh, especially for a man in that role, he's really, really, really set the bar high for other companies to follow, and I think he's incredible. So, Sadie, that would be my top, top five. <laughs> so, Sadie, how can our listeners connect with you, and where should they follow you? Uh, definitely LinkedIn. Um, that's definitely the best way. Otherwise, you can check out the website at talk.pro or drop me an email anytime on sally at talk.pro. And last but not least, Sally, is there one piece of advice that you would really like to convey to future leaders that they should implement in their own life? 
Um, I think the power of conversation would be the one thing that I would say is to understand that as a leader, you are in constant conversation and conversation means that both parties talk. Um, at one part, one you're talking and the other people are listening, but you have to also take the turn of being the listener and not the speaker. And I think for me, that would be the one thing that I would say should be included in everyone's leadership goals. Well, Sadi, thank you so much for sharing your insights and your wisdom into the future of leadership and reminding us that there's power in conversations and that listening, real listening, is possibly the most underrated skill today. Thank you so much. I already had fun.